I'm Haley. And I'm Laura. And this is Insight at the Berg. So, we're here today. We have our guest, Matt Stevens, who will be coming by a little later. And this week's events have been rotationals on campus. Mm -hmm. We also have the PALS event coming up, so we'll discuss that a little bit. But what we're going to hit now is the Kent State sweatshirt. Laura, have you heard anything about that? I have, and this is by Urban Outfitters, if I'm correct. Yes, and they actually, they've, they've been in the news quite a bit for this similar things. They are very taboo, and uh, you can consider them taboo in our culture, but they could also be considered edgy. I believe they also had a shirt that read, Eat Less, mm -hmm. which is not promoting positive body image. They it's also actually, have one that just says, Depression, 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 Depression. My question to the company is, do they truly believe in what they're selling, or is it their passive way of protesting against it? Because either way, their company is being talked about in, you know, in a quote from America's Next Top Model, whether they're saying good things or bad things, at least I'm being talked about. So they get a lot of free publicity. And is it their way for people to stand up against the cause as far as eat less? Well, how many people came out and said, no, positive body image? Is it their way of trying to get people to protest against it and come together? That's my question. But back to the sweatshirt. So from my knowledge, and it is a, it's supposed to be a white sweatshirt that is colored an awful dingy red, like not even a nice burgundy. It is like dingy red and it's supposed to be stained. And then specifically there's certain stains right here that would show like a gunshot. Mm -hmm. So there's certain stains that are a lot thicker than others, but it's not just a random like stained line. It's like drops as if someone as, as if, it's as if you got drops. shot. Precisely. And, yeah. and I just, I can't imagine what it would be like to be a Kent State student or even alumna seeing this and feeling like they're not honoring that day of the, kill, of the shooting, which happened in 1970. Um, it was a peaceful protest and during the Vietnam era, and because of that, the officials decided to take action in their own hands and they ended up shooting people where several got wounded but four were killed at that time. And the idea of the sweatshirt, the company claims that they, it wasn't supposed to be about that at all, but it's kind of ironic that that tragic event happened and yet this sweatshirt almost seems like it's a representation of that. Yes. Now, the company claims that it's not, but a lot of people are taking it as it is. Um, like I've said, the company's been known for doing a lot of things like are, that are like this, like the eat less and all this. And is it just promotion, like to get their name out there? Or is it because that's what they think? Um, I personally, like if they were just doing this to get their name out there, they're definitely getting their name out there, but at the same time, they're getting a lot of protesters out there who don't want to buy it. So I don't really see how that's a very good marketing scheme. No, it's a very poor marketing strategy of, of all things. And it's just, again, it, it's almost tragic if something like that happened at Heidelberg and they had a sweatshirt like that. Like, how many of you would actually buy it? I know I wouldn't, just because mm -hmm. it's Heidelberg. Plus, why? who would any... Off topic... Who would buy a Kent State shirt that didn't, didn't go to Kent State? Is that just me? No, I mean, a lot of people buy Ohio State sweatshirts and they don't go to Ohio State. Yeah, but their football team, like, that, if you're into football, I'm not even into football, but the fact that the Buckeye candies taste so awesome, I'm into football season and wear my Ohio State hoodie because I know when I go to my grandma's, I get to have that Buckeye. So, you don't have that for Kent State, though. It's just... See, well, I'm Kent from State. I'm from Northeast Ohio, where Kent State is, and I mean it's it's pretty big over there. Maybe not for sports per se, but like everybody knows about Kent State. Like a lot of people wear Ohio State stuff, a lot of people wear Akron University stuff, and a lot of people wear Kent State stuff, and like a lot of people wear Bowling Green stuff and don't go to Bowling Green. But Bowling Green isn't necessarily known for their sports either. 
perhaps I'm just picky. I think it's just that they're a bigger school, so people know about them, so people wear their stuff. Now, Urban Outfitters, that's not just an Ohio company, though. It's a no, company it's not. nationwide. So that's my question. Why is, who would buy a Kent State shirt in Florida? Who would buy a Kent State sweatshirt in California? That's where I was getting at is, yeah, um, yeah I wear Ohio State, but I'm from Ohio. Yeah. I wouldn't wear a Florida State shirt unless I liked Florida State, and they don't have Buckeyes, so I'm not going to eat those. <laughs> not all about that. Unless they have dolphin cookies, maybe I'll do that. Yeah. But that's a, that's, even then, that's just not the same. That's just wrong, you know? Dolphins yeah. are nice. So another big event that's going on at Heidelberg is the PALS, which is Patricia Adams Lecture Series. This series is specifically designed to bring in successful women. There's been a year where we had the executive producer of Sesame Street, who happened to be a woman, talking about her successes, what other things she does to strive to be a part of the community, and overall it's just a great learning experience for individuals who want to become a part of that. I know specifically this semester we're having Jackie Mc McMullen from ESPN. Um, so if you're into media, she's definitely a person to check out. And there's a great dinner you can do. I think they're offering steak this year. I know I'm going. Um, Laura, do you have any more insight on that? I do. I went to a PALS lecture last year, and it was for this lady who worked at Ford, and she was working to make the cars more environmentally friendly. And throughout this lecture, she's telling us all the things that they've been working on and doing, and she was also telling us how she's one of the only women up there in those higher-up positions. But she was telling us how she got there, and it was really interesting to hear her story. And it was wonderful to see someone looking out for our environment. All right. I actually think I went to that same lecture, and they are very informative. Yes. Um, also, when you're at the dinner, they, the individual or the speaker, in this case, does do another speech on what they do. But it's a great networking opportunity as well. There's a specific hour set aside for an for a student to network with the speaker and also their other friends that are there at the Patricia Adams Lecture Series. So I highly encourage you going. All right. Well, when we come back, we're going to have Matt Stevens. So we'll see you back here at Inside at the Berg. Hi, my name is Kayla Tidrick and I'm the Director of Wellness and Healthy Living here at the Sauerwine Health and Wellness Center on Heidelberg University's campus. This facility was made possible through the generous gift from Mary and Cliff Sauerwine. Uh, we are in a $4.3 million facility. The hours of operation are Monday through Thursday, 5.30 in the morning until 11 p.m. Fridays, 5.30 in the morning until 9 p.m. Saturdays, we are open at 9 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. And Sundays we open at noon and we close at 11 p.m. Upon entering the Sauerwein Health and Wellness Center, you are generally greeted by the staff. Some of the staff's responsibility is checking in members as well as cleaning and sanitizing all of the equipment. You also notice on this floor is our fitness floor filled with our strength pieces which are, include free weights and selectorized pieces which are your machine pieces to work out with. The second floor of the Sauerwine Health and Wellness Center is our cardio floor. We currently offer 23 different pieces of cardio equipment. We have everything from treadmills to ellipticals to a climb mill. Our new pieces include a crank cycle as well as the climb mill. The Sauerwine Health and Wellness Center also offers two multi-purpose rooms. Currently the room is being housed as one giant room, however it can be split into two rooms in case two different groups want to use the room. The room is currently utilized as a free workout facility, so as far as informal recreation, it's also used for student organizations such as the dance team and hypnotic. The YMCA provides at least 15 hours of group fitness classes per semester here on campus, which include anything from yoga to Zumba to Pilates. Welcome back to Inside at the Berg. I'm Haley. I'm Laura. And today we have Matt Stevens, who is the president of Greek Council. Now, Matt, what all do you do on campus? Well, I'm on the men's soccer team here. I'm also part of New Sigma Alpha. And as you said before, I serve as Greek Council president. All right. And what's your major? 
Business Administration and Sports Management. And are you a senior this year? I am. All right. Go seniors. Senior pride. <laughs> Um, so being that you're the president of Greek Council, what are some of the goals that you want to achieve this year? Well, my main goal this year is to just increase the numbers that are in participating in Greek life. From the time I got here, f numbers have been fluctuating a lot. Groups that were small when I got here are now big. Groups that were big when I got here have become smaller. And I'd like to see all the groups stay big and healthy so that they can, because each group brings something unique to campus. And when each group is big, I mean, they have a better chance of showing the whole campus what they can do is rotationals. Greek rotationals is a time that each potential new member can go and meet all the different groups individually in a more informal setting. Uh, we have Greek Symposium first, which is a very formal setting in Great Hall, where it's just a brief overview of Greek life here. And then rotationals comes next. And you go to the halls of each group, and you spend about 10 or 15 minutes in the halls, and you rotate, hence the name rotationals, from hall to hall and you get to know more about each group and what they stand for on campus and what they believe in. Yeah. All right. That's cool that everyone can go see all the halls. Yeah, it's pretty neat actually because even in Greek life, I don't really get a chance to peek into a lot of the other mm -hmm. halls, so when the doors are open, it's kind of cool to see what every, everyone else looks like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you mentioned Greek Symposium. So what exactly is Greek Symposium? Greek Symposium is kind of the beginning of the year kickoff to Greek life recruitment. It's when anyone can come to this, and it's t held in Great Hall. It's very formal. Everyone's dressed up, and each president of the groups gives speech. And it's kind of just an introduction to Greek life in general here at Heidelberg. OK, so if students wanted to come check out the Greek life in a more professional setting versus the in informal setting, like rotationals, that would be the place to go? I'd say so, yes. I'd say start with symposium first, get like the basic overview, and then if it's still something that interests you, you can go to rotationals and get more information on each group. So Matt, why did you become Greek? Well, I became Greek because when I first came here, I was recruited for the men's soccer team, obviously. And uh, a couple of the members on my soccer team were part of New Sigma Alpha. And I formed really good friendships with them. And they kind of just invited me to come over and hang out. And I really got to know all the people in the group. For me, it was kind of different than other people. Other people will kind of explore all the groups to decide which one's best, while others immediately find their niche where they think they belong. For me, I kind of just found my niche right in the beginning, and I didn't really go explore the other ones that much, but it was definitely a good choice for me, and I don't regret it. Now, when you say niche, is there any way, other way you can describe like how you find your fit? Because some, I know that there's some students who feel like they found their place, but then decide maybe that wasn't the right choice like what what was the moment that you knew that Hyde or New Sigma Alpha was the group for you? Um, I think it just came over a long period of time not very long actually but like <laughs> <laughs> for like weeks and weeks I would spend time like hanging out with these guys on a daily basis through soccer and then I'd go over there on weekends and play like games and stuff with them get to know them better and I guess at one point it just kind of like clicked in my head like this is probably something that I want to be a part of. Like, I think this is the group for me. It's hard to put like a real like, descriptive word on it for me because I know like my roommate, for example, he didn't know who he was going to join until like the day of bid, bids were handed out. So when he had to make a decision kind of not as well informed as I did, I'd say yeah. probably. But for me, I, it was pretty easy the entire time. So you were like hanging out with them and then they became like your brother, so you made it official. Exactly. Yeah. I pretty much felt like I was a part of the organization before I even joined it. And now that you're in it, what kind of, what have you learned from New Sigma Alpha, like the networking or the leadership? What have you gained that you feel is very valuable in real life? The thing I probably gained that I find is more val most valuable is leadership ability. I did not expect to do anything like serve on Greek Council when I first joined or anything like that, but I managed to Ever since I joined, I've held office in my organization, and then my senior year, which is this year, obviously, I was able to become president of Greek life as a whole. So it's definitely given me a lot of opportunities to develop as, like, personally. All right. I think a lot of Greek people can agree with that as yes. well. Yes. So my more personal question to you, even more personal than why you went Greek, is what's your favorite meal at Horniman? That's a tough one. Um, <laughs> 
I'd say pasta bar when it's there. Mm -hmm. When Brenda cooks pasta bar, I don't think I don't think much beats that. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> if we're going with the regular food, I'd say mini corn dogs would be my favorite. Mini corn dogs. What's I yours? I would say the omelet bar is probably my favorite, just because I really love breakfast. So being able to make my own omelet, I normally just stick to ham and cheese. But in my head, I'm making <laughs> it really lavish and awesome. <laughs> it's better than regular eggs. Yes, it is. <laughs> and what's your favorite? Um, I really like the pasta bar, or I like making a sandwich, as like silly as that sounds. <laughs> I like sandwiches. <laughs> she likes sandwiches. That's just a thing. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to cut to a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to test Matt on his Greek alphabet knowledge. All right, welcome back to Inside at the Berg. We have Matt, and we're going to test his Greek alphabet knowledge. So, what we're going to do with you, Matt, is you're going to go down the Greek alphabet, which there are a total of 24 letters. Half of them you've seen on campus, half of them you might not have seen. So, we'll see how well you know it. And my only advice to you is to do like a phi and do your best. So, I'll try. Are you ready? <laughs> ready as I'll ever be. Okay. All right. Go ahead and start. You don't have to do, there's not time. We're just curious on how well you know your letters. All right, well, I'll start from the beginning. I go alpha, beta, sigma, um, nu, phi, <laughs> zeta, theta, psi, um, rho, eta, delta, um, Delta. You said Delta. Oh, you said right. Delta. Sigma. You said you that. You said Sigma. Chi. I said that already. Yeah, I said Chi, so that's yeah. a new one. Um, You're halfway there. Tau. Tau's one, yes. Um, you, um, that's not one. I'm, I'm stuck. I was say, you're missing two letters from a group whose colors are burgundy and white. Oh, Kappa. And? Omega. There you go. I was going to say, I'm trying to think of all the groups and think what they are. <laughs> I was going to say Phi, but uh, the X, uh, that's not one because they're. No. Both, yeah. Or, no. Uh, yeah. yeah um, you're at 15. 15. That means I have a couple more that I'm missing. Nine, uh, about nine more. Nine more. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nine more. <laughs> Epsilon, is that one? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just there. Hitting a roadblock now. Did I say gamma already? Gamma. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll edit it in. Huh. Do I get any hints? Um, one is a, a math symbol. Math symbol. Good thing I'm bad at math. <laughs> um, One that has to do with circumference. circumference. Still drawing a blank. Circumference. I'm drawing a blank. The circumference, like, or is the area of a circle or circumference of a circle? It's pi. Pi. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Pi, that's, that's a good one. It's yeah. a thing. <laughs> okay. I was I didn't know pi was a Greek letter. I didn't, I didn't either. either. It's, it's <laughs> something new to me. It's on Google. Yeah. Mm, good. <laughs> that's how I know these. Um, There's another one that's used in math. It's also a Pokemon. Oh. oh. Let me think now. Let me think. <laughs> um, Can't go wrong with Pokemon. No. It's a pretty awesome Pokemon. Is it Ditto? No. no. That's, no. <laughs> yes, that's a good one, though. Um, no, it's a pretty awesome Pokemon. I can't think of it. That's the one that doesn't talk, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. How do the girls know this, but I don't? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what the heck? What are, you, what are you trying to say? Girls aren't supposed to know Pokemon? Because no, I, I know my Pokemon. I need to know a little more, I guess. I need to go back and study. <laughs> it's 
on Netflix. There you go. It's on Netflix. It is on Netflix. Is really? Yeah. Yeah. Pokemon's on Netflix. Something to do on Sundays now. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yes. There's 50 episodes up there. Just saying. There you go. We watched all 50. <laughs> all right. I'm so. Not, I don't know. He doesn't talk. There's a whole movie about him. And then there was a second part. There were two episodes about it. Two episodes. What's it start with? M. Oh, Mew. Yeah. Okay. There you go. I got it now. See? There you go. All right. Can you think of any more? I can't. All right. The ones that you missed are Iota. All right. Which you would have to watch the television series Greek to know that. That's the only reason I know it. Lambda. Oh, I shouldn't. I knew that one. And... There's the ep epsilon and then upsilon. So there's one with a U. Hmm. And it, the Greek letter is a Y. Okay. And then the last one that you for you forgot was Omicron. I've, I've never even heard one. of that one. I haven't either, but it's here. Oh, and it's spelled weird. I've never seen it. Put it up right here. I apologize. We'll do the correct we'll do it correctly. So yes. Yeah. Well, thanks for participating in our game. Yes. Thank you. I learned you did something well. new. There you did. You learned, yeah, you missed, you did what, four or five? He missed um, six. Six. Okay. And then By my him. count, anyway. Okay. I could be we wrong. We, well, we helped him on those few if you're counting those. I did. Okay. Then that's where <laughs> you're missing six. I'm counting okay. the ones that you absolutely didn't know at all. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> thanks for the help. <laughs> we, gave you, we gave you a hit box. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, Matt, for coming in thank you. and talking about Greek life. That's all we have today at Inside at the Berg. I'm Haley. I'm Laura. We'll see you next time.